Okay class, so now we are on to part two, glazing. So the first thing is first, if you haven't done this yet, go wash your hands with soap and water, really good. If let's say you're in the middle of eating potato chips, well now you have that grease on your hands. Uh, as soon as you touch your clay, it's very porous, so it will absorb that grease. That can cause issues with your glaze to not stick to the surface, and then it could peel off during firing, and then you'll have a bald spot on your piece, and you don't want that. So always start your project with clean hands. Now that you've washed your hands, we'll move on to part two. We wanna make sure we have all of our supplies in front of us. start with our sponge and what we'll do is we'll dip our sponge in our little clean water dish and you don't want to use a sponge that you use for dishes uh, because again the same concept it would have food grease on your sponge and then you would transport that onto your clay and that could create issues with the glaze adhering properly and your paintbrushes too, you should have paintbrushes specifically for your glaze because let's say you use your paintbrushes for oil paints. Well, it's the same concept. That oil paint could cause, you know, it's always impossible to get them perfectly clean and then they have all this residue in there of other chemicals that may not react properly to the glaze and that could cause issues. So these are just for glazing. I only use them for glazing. I've already started these tiles in class. We, we, this is as far as I got with my class. So what we're going to do is we will use our damp sponge and we will wipe off all surfaces of the tile, the sides, the bottom, and the top. I'm not going to actually do it because I have glaze on there. Now some of the tiles had a little bit of paper residue on the top of them from when I had put the design on it. If you have little bits of paper, you could get your sponge really damp, but wring it out so it's not dripping wet, and then just work really slowly to remove any paper off of there. You don't want to rub too hard because then you'll actually rub off your design. So just work really slowly until all of that paper is removed. And the reason why we want the whole surface wet when we glaze it is because at this point your clay is leather hard. So it's pretty firm, which means it's pretty dry and getting it wet will create those pores to open so that they soak in that glaze easier and more consistently. One thing that is important to do if you would like to continue working with glaze is when you have your paperwork that you got your template from or if you're just freehanding it's good to maybe keep a piece of paper handy and make a note of the individual colors that you're using and even if you wanted to you could mark specific areas as to what glaze you used that way when they come out of the kiln you if you really like a color let's say you're using two different blues well you really like this blue over that blue then you have a little cheat sheet of what you used that way you remember for your next project the thing about working with glaze if you've worked with paint before it's important to know that your glaze before it's fired in a kiln it will not look anything like what it's going to look like when it's finished so these are different minerals and chemicals mixed with clay and it's not like the pigment you have when you're painting where you actually see what you're getting can you hear my cats so the colors are very chalky and pastel 
but once you fire them in a kiln, the colors are really brought out and they really pop. So I'll show you a picture of before and after a kiln firing so you can understand. When you're using glaze, there is a degree of trial and error. You have to be open for the consideration that your project's not gonna come out exactly as you expect it to. <laughs> and that's okay, that's the real fun about pottery and ceramics is it's an exciting tool to learn, but there is a learning curve and it's very exciting to see what happens in that kiln and when you get your final project. If you're taking my class on Zoom right now, you could do your underglaze on your tiles and then you'll turn them into me. I will add a clear glaze on top of it and then I will fire it in the kiln for you. So if you're joining me at home, more than likely you have your own kiln or you have a studio that you're able to go to. With that, you're probably purchasing your own underglaze and clear glaze. That's the steps that you will need to do. With the brand that I'm using, we could do this all in one step for class. So we could do our underglaze, let that dry, and then we could dip it into the clear glaze and then fire it in the kiln. And I have tested this, they turned out beautiful. It's perfect for a classroom setting. I'm using Mako Underglaze, which is the Mako Fundamentals Underglaze, and then I'm using the Clear One Glaze, which is just a clear, glossy, beautiful glaze. From what I understand, you can use certain underglazes on the bottom of your piece and put that in a kiln. I have not experimented with that yet with this brand, so I'm not gonna take any chances. So we're gonna keep the bottom of our tile and the sides free from glaze. We're not gonna glaze those. So we're just gonna glaze the top of the tile only. So for this class, we are gonna be using glaze in these little bottles. The bottles came with a needle nozzle and it's been really nice. I tried doing it both ways. I tried using paint brushes. It took me five hours to paint with the paintbrush on one tile, <laughs> which is not a cost effective way to make tiles. With under glaze to get a true opaque, beautiful solid coverage, you have to do three layers when you're using a paintbrush. So to do all three layers, it took me five hours. I don't necessarily recommend that for beginners. If that's the way you wanna do it, that's fine. But I bought these tiny little bottles online. They were really, really cheap and it was awesome. I just poured my glaze into these bottles and instead of using a paintbrush, I'm just squeezing it directly onto the tile and because I'm doing this method, I should only need one layer. I do not have to do three layers to get opacity. I've already done the background on these tiles. I do recommend doing the larger background area first and then doing the more detailed parts last because if your glaze got a little wide and it went a little over that's okay because you're gonna layer over those fine details and that's what's gonna show so it shouldn't bleed together it should come out crisp beautiful lines and so I will show you how that's done you always want to shake your glaze really 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 well before you use it and these little caps that come with the bottle to uh, keep it sealed, I just take them all the way off while I'm doing it so they don't get in my way. Because I'm right-handed, I kind of start in the middle and then work my way to the right. I start on an outside edge, gently squeezing it. And I try to be really careful not to drag the tip on the clay directly. If you do get a little bit of clay 
on the tip of it because you dragged it, you could use your washcloth and just clean the nozzle tip kind of back and forth like that just to get that clay off of there. Once I did the outline area, I just pull the glaze in the middle to fill that area in. Now when you use this needle tip, it does have a tendency of being a bit thicker than it would be if you were using a paintbrush. You could get much more fine precision with a paintbrush. It is just incredibly time consuming. But if you are a stickler for perfection, by all means use a paintbrush. Just keep in mind that you should do three layers if you want the glaze to be completely opaque and all uniform. Now, of course, using a paintbrush, you could blend colors better if you wanted to blend colors. You absolutely could do that. So I do have a little bit of clay on the tip of my nozzle, so I'll just wipe that off of my damp washcloth. And then I will use my uh, straight pin and clean the nozzle. And then I'll wipe that on my washcloth and do it again. just to be safe. That should be good. And then I will put this little cap back on it. So we'll let that dry and then we could do the next layer. Look at how beautiful my students' tiles all turned out with their underglaze. They did such a great job. Next step, we're going to do the clear glaze. Hey Siri, set a timer for six minutes. I very carefully dip the top part of the tile into the clear glaze. Making sure that I don't go too deep on the sides. I rotate the tile to the corners to drip off any excess glaze. I then very carefully place it on a flat surface so that it dries evenly, wiping the edges off where my fingers were. It's been a privilege to be able to share this information with my friends so that we can all learn together. Please make sure you subscribe to my page so that you can continue to learn with me and see my journey of learning with ceramics. Look at how beautiful the glazes and the tiles turned out after the kiln. I'm so proud of my students. They just turned out beautiful. Be sure to check out my website, hardshellslimysnell.com to keep up with all my journeys and to see if I have any goods for sale.